Welcome, Revive Nation subscribers. It is a privilege to be with you again. We hope you had opportunity to see Pastor Shaiju Matthew preach at UFIC, the church in Zimbabwe, which is led by his spiritual father, Prophet Emmanuel Nakandiwa. Today, it's the rest of the story. We're going to talk about how Pastor Shaiju met Prophet Emmanuel Nakandiwa how he discovered what a spiritual father would do for his life and how he discovered what it means to be a son by revelation of the Holy Spirit. We hope you enjoy this series and we look forward to Pastor Shaiju's book coming out on this topic in the very near future. Thank you so much for being part of our subscribers. Please share with your friends and we hope you enjoy. I'm here with Pastor Shaiju Matthew. I understand that you were in Zimbabwe recently because your spiritual father invited you to preach at his church, which has over 80,000 people. Can you tell me how that came about? Oh, while we were there, actually, he surprised us. I kept feeling that he's going to ask me to stay back. So when I went and he, he asked me to stay, I was more than happy. And just enjoy another week of his ministry. But to my shock, he asked me to minister. And that was like huge, huge honor because that was not something that that is easily, you know, I understand how, what it is to share our platform, which is yes. much smaller. Great humbling moment for me that he would take that risk with me, you know. Prophet Makadiwa has a great reputation in Africa and in, in many parts of the world and his beloved wife Ruth. Why was it so important to you to have their spiritual covering? Over the last uh, few years my understanding about um, spiritual parenting has grown. Um, what spiritual covering means because it is a subject that is not uh, very familiar at least in this part of the world and you see that there is a greater level of grace and unction and, uh, authority that people carry when they understand um, how the spiritual inheritance work. There are many things that consistently uh, throughout the scriptures that, that spoke to my heart. I was, I was just 19 years old when the Lord appeared to me uh, when I was at, in a hotel and said, Father, this generation. I remember that moment and asking the Lord, how could that be because I'm not married, I don't have children. Uh, how do I do that? But that year onwards, I was just 19 years old, I had people calling me dad. And uh, I would, I wanted to run away from it because it was awkward that they were older than me. But it was a divine appointment and I had to grow to that understanding. To be a father, to help, to love, to protect, to mm -hmm. mold, to guide, uh, is the easier reflection. But when, when you talk about being a son, it there is a becoming, there is a process involved mm -hmm. where you, 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 you take your identity, you take your success, you take your knowledge, you take your past experiences and you submit it under somebody. That requires a lot of dying. I know in North America the word submit is basically a dirty word. So how does submit and inheritance and fathering go together. So this this topic would um, I don't think I would be able to do justice on a on a short video like this. It probably is a book in the making. It's probably okay. a few hours of conversation. I'm sure that that a short clip like this would leave people with more questions than answer. But it is good to have a conversation that brings more questions. Right. That means it will lead you to answers. So it, it, it's also important for us to understand that that Jesus himself is the highest uh, model for uh, being a son. And he said, I and my father are one. If you see me, you've seen my father. You see this sonship throughout the scriptures where Elisha was already anointed to be the prophet. He already had the anointing mm -hmm. as the prophet and yet he would leave everything aside and, and, and journey all the way to Elijah's fulfillment of his assignment on the planet. You see sonship there. He moved from being a servant to being a son. One of the most hardest areas of being a son is pride. Yep. Because you, here you are, you, you, you are submitting yourself uh, under a man so that he's going to teach you, he's going to correct you, he's going to lead you. 
and there are so many things that that you feel you know the feel you are right but it's not the right time so it, it takes a father to who's who has that understanding of of the journey and what the journey is like to be able to so it takes a lot of lot more of submission it's not like a boss who you're like hey i don't like you so i'm going to fire myself out you know uh, there is no exit plan you, it's a journey it is a process so there's a lot of dying and so it's harder because you're learning to become a son so you're moving away from it's easier to be a servant it's easier to say i'll do this do this do this Mm-hmm. but to become a son is to become in the image of your father so to grow in that understanding to grow in the knowledge grow into that maturity and that's why it's more hard where jesus being the son of the living god did not start his ministry until he submitted to authority mm-hmm. so if you see when jesus was born why did he need mary why did he need joseph he didn't need it. he is the son of the living god he is a creator of the creation mm-hmm. and he is coming into his creation he doesn't need anybody's help but he submitted mm-hmm. under under local authority and he was under his parents mm-hmm. and then at the age of 30 he is a creator just about to get into his ministry yet he does not uh, he does not start it immediately until he submits himself under at that time there was a man that was sent by god assigned by god who was appointed by god in that season in that age jesus went and submitted under him uh, if you notice the words of jesus he said let all righteousness be fulfilled what does that mean i am i am the sinless lamb mm-hmm. i am, there is no sin in me mm-hmm. how can you say that there is more righteousness to be fulfilled by submission he was saying there was he was coming under a greater fulfillment of that righteousness so it's not just the lack of what i didn't do is mm-hmm. the things that we need to do to come under the greater blessing because god is a god of order he never does anything even when he wanted to deliver israelites from egypt he just didn't send his angels and and destroy the enemies god sent moses to pharaoh If god was not asking for permission why would he come like a dozen times Mm-hmm. kept coming and knocking on the door let my people go he said i'm giving you one more chance i don't technically need your permission mm-hmm. but i am i am honoring authority god placed authority so it, it was a revelation to me that no matter how anointed i am my my fullness is not manifest until i submit and today i look back and and i, I wish i i understood this a lot more 5 years ago 10 years ago mm-hmm. when i was in india um but now i understand it in a higher dimension that so i i began to see god and say god i need somebody that that understands what spiritual fatherhood is and somebody whom that i can submit to that can mm-hmm. that has the capacity to see and lead me like i said it's so much this topic is is huge but uh, i'm i'm excited to say that that was the right decision i noticed on twitter that you started a conversation with some of your Twitter followers about sonship and there was some beautiful revelation that was released. Uh, you talk about that sons and daughters are not a natural inheritance that that they're born by revelation and sustained by instruction. Can you just expand on that? Let me put it this way. I am a spiritual father to everybody in my church. Mm-hmm. But not everybody in my church are connected to me mm-hmm. and receive from me in the same level of a son or daughtership why because uh, it depends on their level of revelation of what i am to them that they receive from me in that capacity mm-hmm. so the the greater the revelation of of what their spiritual inheritance is the more they receive from it it, it needed to have a revelation of understanding that hey i'm i'm not i just don't want to be isolated i don't want to walk alone mm-hmm. um, i want to submit to something so that revelation will bring certain set of instructions and that instruction would simply be to shut up mm. <laughs> you know uh, i think in in one of the tweets i said about uh shutting up uh, and, and staying under a covering yeah you said find a spiritual father that you can keep your ego aside and shut up under <laughs> i thought that one was particularly strong and powerful <laughs> for example one of the 
biggest lessons I'm learning is is the fact that my spiritual father is not in the same country as I am. Uh, he's he's uh, advisor to presidents. That means he's not always available. Mm -hmm. uh, he's not my buddy to keep calling him all the time. Yeah. But I have to learn the significance of me staying near uh, in the realm of the spirit, receiving f the mindset and the lifestyle, not just just being friends. So some people will immediately think, okay, now I have a spiritual father, he should be always in my ears, he should be my buddy, he should be always available. Not necessarily. Uh, God gives you a stream, God gives you a person, an umbrella that to come under, for you to understand that this is the example I need to follow. Mm -hmm. Whose footsteps are clear enough so that your path is clear. Because you see the footsteps of your father and it is very clear and you can follow in that footsteps. I noticed when we watched the video of you in Zimbabwe that you deferred with great reverence and respect to your spiritual father and after you finished preaching you went to him to honor him again. That's just a, a little capsule of I'm sure what you are practicing in your daily steps with with your father. Why is it so critical? One thing is for sure, not all sons will receive from you uh, the same way. So the amount of honor you invest into a relationship is the amount you receive from. How much you honor a man and the gift he carries is how much you receive from. And how much you honor will, will directly be a sign of how much you will celebrate. And what you do not celebrate will always exit your life. So there's a danger of of not honoring uh, your 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 spiritual covering, your your own pastor, and and then we wonder why we don't receive from him because you have not shown honor in, and so the level of honor that you give is the level you you receive, and so um, we are in a generation where like hey everybody you and I we are equal you know God anointed one more. God place somebody in places of authority. God gives different kinds of gifts. Not every gift is the same. Not every office is the same. Um, God says, honor your authority. So God himself created those levels of, of places. Not because uh, I am better than them or somebody else is better than me, uh, but it is the grace of the Lord that God has placed somebody over a certain place in a certain position over our life. So it is a test of our character of how much we can honor. And I think it'll keep coming back, especially in sonship. Would you honor them if they don't give you what you want? Would you honor them if they don't pick up your call? Would you honor them if they are silent? That's one thing that, that my wife and I, we decided, we said, hey, even if we don't have access to him for the next 10 years, uh, we're gonna stay focused that we do this before the Lord. And it had to come out of a revelation and not just an excitement. What does loyalty have to do with being a good son? When I was in Zimbabwe, one of my meditations was, God, I want to be a son of honor. Just teach me what that means. And the Lord began to speak about how loyalty was rare in the kingdom. Because there are many, many times we, are, we become very opportunistic of why we are loyal. We switch our loyalties uh, when we find better opportunities and that can happen because of, because of lack of revelation we we had to come to this stage in our season in our life for us to have a full understanding of what that loyalty means and say okay god if this is what it means uh, we want to be faithful to that uh, for long term and and that's when the lord showed me how absalom was born in a royal family mm -hmm. but he didn't have loyalty right. and his blood was spilled Mm -hmm. Why? Because the royal blood could not be contained in a body that had rebellion. Okay. And that is why blood is spilt. And you will see Judas, he was called as a royal priesthood, mm -hmm. like all the others. But the royalty was not in him. Loyalty was not in him. So the royal blood could not stay in a body that housed uh, disloyal, who okay. was disloyal. And his blood was spilt. And that is a very scary truth that that. God himself will withdraw from people uh, that are not loyal to his kingdom and his principles. So it's a great deal. When you're looking for a spiritual father, 
I'm sure that starting in your local church is the best place, but what do you do if you have um, a leader that you don't connect with, that you don't fit with? How do you move forward in your pursuit to be a son? I believe that this, re this is a topic that we should cover in depth. Um, in fact, what I would um, suggest to our viewers, if you're interested in this topic, I would encourage you to go ahead and hit subscribe to this video channel. Um, what I'll do is I'd create another extensive subject, a uh, topic on um, how to stay under a pastor who doesn't understand spiritual covering and uh, doesn't understand spiritual you know, if you feel like you know my pastor is not favorable towards me um, or maybe I don't have the privilege or or the resources that is required for me to uh, travel to another location and find another pastor or mentor or I don't have access or you know there, there may be a cry what do am I stuck am I gone you know I don't think you are lost because there are principles that you can practice wherever you are placed that can activate the blessings of God. Mm -hmm. uh, so many times we put the onus on finding a more anointed person mm. uh, to bless us. I don't think it is, the, the principle is not just about finding a more anointed person, it is about being where God wants you to be. Mm -hmm. So if God put you with somebody and if you can practice principles that you need to practice and, and do what, you, what God says you need to do, you have to receive a certain level of blessings. And I'll cover that in, in probably my next video. Hey, before you close, I, maybe we should just show you about my journey, how, um, how I met my spiritual father. We would love and, to uh, see that. Yes, we'll conclude with that. Thank you for... Thanks. But I'm preaching and I think that is because of the grace of the man of God. And this is the and last year I came to a place of, of, of frustration saying there must be more than this. And I began to see God. I was on a 40 day fast. And I was watching a lot of prophets on YouTube and then on the right side, there was a thumbnail of a man of God who was just bowing down and sitting on, on the stage. When I clicked on it, it was just a worship song. And in the video, there was a tall man of God. It was a, it was a 2012-2013 video. A video in 2012-2013. In that small clip, he was not preaching. He wasn't prophesying. He wasn't healing the sick. He was just, just repeatedly singing that song, Makanaka Jesu. That man was none other than, than our father. He was my papa. <laughs> I didn't know that then. <laughs> that video, his face was shining like an angel. I heard other people sing the same song, but it was not the song, it, it, it was the anointing on the man of God. My, my staff, every time they came inside, they heard the same song, I think they got bored. <laughs> I, I send the song to my believers who are from Zimbabwe, I said, translate this for me because there is an anointing on this video. At the end of the 40 days, I was sleeping. And, and Papa came to me in the dream. But it was not here, it was in the, the sports 
center. He walked to where I was and he just smiled in a way only Papa can smile. And he just put his head and said, it's okay, come. <laughs> so that week, I jumped on a plane and came. <laughs> because I kept calling the Life Heaven office. They were not picking up. I said, nobody is going to stop my destiny, so I came. <laughs> <laughs> but but when I came, I was I, I it was I was jet lagged and the sleep was too much, and Pandaka, I slept off. Pandaka uya ndanganda neta nikuushanya kwenye ndaita. I woke up and it it was the Tuesday and it was the service had already started. I started freaking out. <laughs> I, I, I told my wife, the devil is a liar. I am still going. <laughs> when I came, I was shocked to see a stadium full of people. And there was not a single seat left. And one brother from the crowd, he was so kind to me, he came and took my bag and he gave me his seat. Then I looked at the number. I, in my dream, I was sitting in number four, but now I'm sitting in number eight. <laughs> I said, is that a problem? <laughs> And the first place that Papa went was that side. And I, I kept saying, okay, he's going to come. He's going to come. He's going to come. The dream has to come to pass. And he came till where I was and he took a left turn and started going back. My heart broke. I said, I shouldn't have slept so long. I said, wait a minute. I have been preaching about Jesus. I cannot be, be somebody who falls to despair. So as the service was going on, I closed my eyes and I began to start worshipping Jesus. I said, God, I lost my chance, but bring the man of God back to where I am. <laughs> and then I saw Papa took a turn and started coming to where I was. I started singing louder. <laughs> and I sang and I sang till Papa came right to where I was. And just like in the dream, his eyes locked with my eyes. I knew from that second, I will never be the same again. When you hear the words, the tagline, sharing life, I don't think you will understand the depth of that lie. There are many men of God, but very few fathers in our generation. And the thank you again, man of God. Thank you.